Right out of the box, Windows 11 can be very bloated. It's packed with useless apps, services, and all these background processes that are secretly eating up your system's resources. And it's frustrating. In this video, I'm going to show you the absolute simplest and easiest way to debloat your Windows 11 computer. This is a super quick guide designed to get you up and running on a clean, snappy version of your new Windows 11 install. This is a fresh install of Windows 11 Pro. The taskbar is a mess. The start menu is filled with bloatware. And if we pull up the task manager, we're already at about 162 processes running in the background. And it's eating up about four gigabytes of memory, all while doing absolutely nothing. Our goal here is simple. We're going to reduce the number of processes, free up that RAM, clear out the junk, and make Windows 11 feel snappy and smooth. All right, let's get started. But first, we need to create a restore point. This is very important. In case you decide you don't like the changes or something unexpected happens, you can instantly reverse all the changes. Just open the Start menu and search for Create a Restore Point. Open it up. Select your C drive, click Create. Give it a name you'll remember and click Create again. Simple as that. Now we're ready to roll. First up, Let's get rid of all this useless bloatware that comes pre-installed. I've created a simple script that automates this whole process for you. You'll find the link in the description below. All you have to do is click on Download Zip. Once it's downloaded, open your Downloads folder and extract the zip file. I'm going to put mine in my Documents folder to keep things organized. Now head over to where you extracted the script create a new text file and name it bloatware. Make sure the name is exactly right because that's super important. Open that text file and then open the terminal as an administrator. In the terminal, type this command. This will give you a list of all the installed apps on your computer. Now we'll go through and decide which apps we want to get rid of and copy their names into our text file. I usually remove anything related to Xbox and the game app. Dev Home, Outlook, Microsoft Teams, the default image viewer, to do's, the Get Help app, anything related to Bing, Clipchamp, and the Your Phone app, the screenshot tool. The default camera app. The default music player. These are all bloatware or apps I either don't use or I already have better alternatives for. You might not want to remove everything I do, but I'll leave my personal list in the description below if you want to use it as a starting point. Now back in the terminal, navigate to where you have your script. I'll use CD to go into Documents and then into the folder where my script is. You can type the first few letters and use the tab key to autocomplete. The ls command will show us all the files inside the current directory. Here is our script. Before we run it, we need to make sure we can run PowerShell scripts without any issues. To do that, run this command. Now just run the script normally. And that's it. It will remove all the apps we listed. You might notice some errors in red here. These are related to some system apps that can't be removed, so don't worry about it. As you can see, we have way less bloat in the start menu now. Some apps might still be there, but they're usually just shortcuts. You can just right click on them and select uninstall. Next, we'll use a fantastic tool called WinUtil for disabling background processes, services, and for some more advanced debloating and tweaks. But before we continue, if this video has been helpful so far, consider subscribing and liking the video for more content like this. Open the WinUtil GitHub page, copy this command, open your terminal as an admin again, and run it. Once it's open, go to Tweaks, and under Essential Tweaks, here I enable the following. You might not want to disable hibernation if you're on a laptop, and if you use network sharing, you may want to leave Home Group enabled. Also, if you have Brave, make sure to check that option. Under Advanced Tweaks, enable the following. 
If you have any Adobe products installed, or if you're planning to install any, enable Adobe Network Block in Adobe Debload. If you have a really low-end computer, you can enable Set Display to Performance, but otherwise I'd leave it unchecked. Click Run Tweaks to apply the changes and wait for it to finish. This might take some time depending on your computer, so just be patient. WinUtil also has O and O Shut Up 10, a great little tool to disable Microsoft's telemetry and data collection. While it's not really for debloating, it's a huge plus for your privacy. I'm not going to do anything fancy here, just go to Actions and apply the recommended settings. That's it. For DNS, I'd recommend using Google or Cloudflare for a better ping, especially if you play a lot of online games, or Quad9 for better privacy. To see which one is faster for you, open the terminal and ping Google's DNS at 8.8.8.8. Take note of the response time and then ping Cloudflare's DNS at 1.1.1.1. The one with the lower response time is the one you should go with. In my case, it's Google's. The options under Customize are mostly personal preference, but I usually just enable Dark Theme, disable Bing Search, enable NumLock on Startup, disable recommendations in the Start menu, and disable Mouse Acceleration and Sticky Keys. This is super important for competitive gaming. I also enable Show File Extensions, and disable the Task View and Widget buttons from the Taskbar, and enable Detailed BSOD, which can be a lifesaver for troubleshooting. I also disable cross-device resume since I don't use it. Lastly, I make sure to enable the ultimate performance power plan. In updates, I recommend allowing only security updates. This is because most feature updates come with bugs and unwanted behavior, like that one update that was breaking SSDs. Now we need to restart our system so all the changes take effect. You can see we still have this widget, the search box, and some icons. Just right-click the taskbar, select Taskbar Settings, and disable widgets and hide the search bar. As for the icons, you can just right-click and select Unpin. Now we have a clean taskbar. Let's compare the RAM usage and processes. Process count dropped by about 50 and RAM usage is down to 2.8 gigabytes from four gigabytes. That's a noticeable difference. Keep in mind, this is a virtual machine, so the results you get might be even better since there are additional services running in the background for the VM to function properly. We're almost done. We just did 99% of the work. Now we're just going to enable some useful features that will help improve performance even more. Let's go and enable game mode. Inside the settings app, search for game mode. This is a good feature for gaming, but it can be a hit or miss sometimes. In general, if you have an NVIDIA GPU, it's recommended to enable it. But for AMD GPUs, there are mixed reviews, so you might want to experiment and see if it works for you. Below game mode, go to graphics and enable optimizations for windowed games. This is really useful if you play games in windowed or borderless mode. In advanced graphics settings, enable GPU scheduling. This improves performance and reduces latency. If you're on a laptop with two graphic cards, click on Add Desktop App, select a game or app, and under GPU Preference, select your most powerful GPU. This ensures your laptop will run that game at maximum performance. Next, search for Core Isolation and disable Memory Integrity. This is a security feature that's pretty resource heavy. If you know what you're doing and you don't download a lot of random stuff from the internet, it's recommended to disable it. Now, let's disable startup apps. Open Task Manager and go to Startup Apps. Here, disable any app that you don't need running in the background all the time. The more software you install, the more cluttered this place gets, so make sure to check it periodically. Lastly, and this is a classic, please make sure you're using the maximum refresh rate of your monitor. You paid for it, so you might as well use it. And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.